Jimbo Fisher's departure from Florida State ends a relationship that was both beneficial to the program and tumultuous from the inception. He demanded control of virtually every detail of the football program, and in exchange he delivered results the school had yearned for since the halcyon days of the 1990s. Fisher arrived at Florida State as the offensive coordinator and coach-in-waiting in 2007, and his unflinching perfectionism forced an outdated program to confront the realities of big-time football in the 21st century. He took command of an athletics department that had grown stale after decades of success under Bobby Bowden. He pushed for massive infrastructure improvements for locker rooms and strength and conditioning facilities. He demanded an indoor practice facility that many of the folks writing the checks at Florida State thought wasn't worth the investment. In short, Fisher's micromanagement injected new life into a moribund program and brought Florida State back to relevancy on the national stage. Fisher's tenure was not without controversy. There were numerous incidents involving Seminoles players under his watch, including sexual assault allegations against Heisman Trophy winning quarterback J. Mice Winston. Fisher stood by Winston at every turn, both during the sexual assault allegations and when he was suspended for shouting a vulgarity in the school cafeteria, which exacerbated tensions between the coach and administration. In his wake, Fisher left a parade of hurt feelings, bad blood, and frustrated administrators, boosters, and staff who felt they could never do quite enough to keep their head coach happy. In the end, a losing season and another round of demands proved too much, and Fisher's final game of chicken in Tallahassee ended with such devastating damage that there was no sense in attempting repair. In eight years as head coach, Fisher had a working relationship with athletic director Stan Wilcox, but Fisher's relationship with Seminole Boosters president Andy Miller was strained by Fisher's constant demands. The problem, however, was more that Fisher had done little to gain allies over the years, and when the power dynamic shifted this season, few people were willing to stick up for the coach. So what exactly did Fisher want? That's a nagging question. Facility upgrades are already in the works, although Fisher offered frustration that FSU hadn't kept pace with burgeoning brands like Clemson. The money was already good with Fisher owning a $40 million buyout, but Texas A&M was willing to pay even more. Fisher made huge gains in salary for his assistants over the years, but this staff struggled badly over the past two seasons, from an embarrassing 63-20 loss to Louisville in 2016 to the season's 5-6 record. Changes were imminent, whether Fisher wanted them or not. More than anything, however, Fisher simply wanted he wanted something more in 2013 when Texas made overtures. He wanted something more in 2016 when LSU showed interest. He wanted more this season when it became clear he was Texas A&M's top target. And at some point, Florida State was simply tired of giving.